I keep hearing this shouting out front and going to check because I'll hear like squeals and screams and shouting and uh, it's just daddy playing basketball with the boys. It's like whenever you're a mom, especially, I think it's probably for all parents, but uh, in the country, you know, your kids play outside and sometimes they're in kind of precarious situations and you kind of just let them be in them. But there are these like heart stopping moments where you stop and you listen really hard and you think, was that? Okay, that's happy sounds. <laughs> That's what, that's what's happening right now. So I'm cooking some dinner. This is soup, which I put these carrots in, which were very purple. And so it's kind of like turning my soup a little purple. I don't know if you can see that. But I actually am just getting this to the point of simmering and I need to run down in the garden and grab some herbs. And I thought I would turn the camera on and take you guys with me. Um, I'm making evening coffee. <laughs> we have morning coffee and evening coffee. Uh, it's funny, whatever, like, <laughs> we go to friends' houses and there's this, they'll go to make coffee and like, do you drink coffee at night? And there's this moment where you like come together and you understand if you're with your people or not. The evening coffee drinkers, you know who you are. <laughs> you are my people. <laughs> I actually put this in a vlog the other day. We actually do have a little espresso machine, which we use this a lot and it's fantastic. It's really good. But this is called a Chemex and it's just a pour over coffee pot. You use it with a kettle and I have like an electric kettle here that you can change the temperature to get it right. Uh, but you can just use like a stovetop kettle and you use these special filters, put coffee grounds in and make coffee this way. It is fantastic. This is really, really good coffee. I've actually always been a big coffee drinker, at least since, I guess, motherhood. Sort of kind of brought that into reality for me. But, um, you know, a handful of years ago, I got really into like really good coffee and like craft coffee. I love trying craft coffee. It's actually one of my favorite things that people sent me. Uh, viewers will send me like whole bean locally roasted coffee from places where they live and I love that. I love all kinds of coffee. I love pour overs because it makes a really, really good cup of coffee. And I used to have a really bad habit of pulling through. Um, drive-throughs that charge you way too much for a cup of coffee that's not even that good and uh, having a pour over at home this was a gift for my brother a couple years ago and seriously it has kicked my fast food coffee habit because I can make a better cup of coffee at home and so I just don't even bother with coffee while I'm out about now actually one of my like bucket list things that I would love to do kind of like a dream thing I would love to own a coffee shop one day I am um, that's just kind of like a, a dream of mine to own a place that does like um, locally roasted coffee and sort of like garden theme it I guess is sort of my mind my my idea but uh, but yeah that's definitely on my on my dream board is coffee shop just moved all of the older eggs into a little whirly doodad here. Um, I can't think of what this is called. Egg skelter, I think is what it's called. Anyway, that kind of keeps the oldest ones down to the front. And then more eggs here, and I've got to go check the coop. Our chickens are in full swing production again, um, which means I'm having to kind of move back into the mindset to use eggs. We kind of treat eggs seasonally, and when our chickens aren't really laying, we don't eat very many of them, uh, because one, we're spoiled to farm fresh eggs, and store eggs, disappointment. They taste like disappointment. So, uh, yeah, so I've been cooking lots of egg dishes lately and kind of getting back into the habit of using eggs. That is a lot of eggs right there. So like in regards to the Chemex, um, I'll link that down below. I try to do that whenever I show the things that we're using because you guys so often ask, hey, where can I find that? And if you purchase things through our Amazon affiliate links, whenever we like link a product, or we have a storefront with recommended items, or we have just an overall Amazon link so you can go buy your uh, baby diapers or batteries or whatever it is you're buying on Amazon through our affiliate link. And that is a really great way to support our channel at no additional cost to you. Uh, we're not trying to sneak that stuff in and I don't like 
try to find things that I can advertise. But on things like that that we actually use every day, uh, you see them and you ask. So we link them and it helps us big time. It's a, it's a really big help to us. All right, so I got my cup of coffee. I'm gonna grab my basket and let's go check out the garden. Oh wait, side note. All right, Brussels sprouts cool. Check this out. I didn't grow this. I wish I had. That would be really neat. But, uh, but yeah, look at that. Aren't they just so beautiful how they grow? Food is fascinating in its natural state. It's garden time! Garden time! Garden time! Garden time! Are you excited? I gotta go pick some herbs. You wanna go with me? Yay! <laughs> you distracted me! I don't know if we'll some Hi, Mom! Do we have a dummy to Hey, guys. Two to two. I kept oh, hearing y'all. Hey, okay. you already shot one, so you gotta give it up. I kept hearing y'all shout, and I didn't know what was going on out here. We've each won the game. No, I have to play left-handed, so that's actually not fair. <laughs> hey, it's my turn. You already made a shot. Okay. Come on. Are you uh, resting your hand? Yes, yeah, it's resting right here. <laughs> you ready to go to the garden? Yeah. It's a little chilly out here. Aren't you cold? The greenhouse. I need to go pick herbs. I got soup turning purple on the stove. You ready for some purple soup for dinner? Yeah, but I gotta get one of those pipes. Wow, they grew a lot. Oh, you got the dibber? I, we're not planting anything. Look at those. Man, they look great. You know what we need to do with that dibber is we need to plant our garlic, but not right now, because I'm cooking dinner. What is it, a jackhammer now? You know those things that go through um walks? Yeah. That's it. <laughs> Guys, do you see this time? I will never be at a lack of time. This plant has been growing for over two years in my garden. Yeah, it smells really good. I'm gonna get some of it, put it in my soup. Probably should have cut it. There we go, that's enough. I also need some rosemary. I know I've got some right here. This is actually variegated rosemary. It's called gold dust. One of my friends, uh, Rick, who I met through having YouTube, and that's me. Hold on, wait. Let's leave that part. Let's pick the parts that's not variegated, because we want to prune that back. So pick the parts that's solid green, okay? Now, where I live, things like rosemary and thyme can live all winter because it's not, um, it doesn't get super cold here. I meant to grab some scissors so I could cut a bouquet while I was down here. I was noticing how beautiful a lot of the flowers were and zinnias last so long. Like you can cut a bouquet of zinnias and they're gonna last on the table for well over a week. But I don't think I have any scissors down here. Hey Ben, let's go check that. You're right, that's rosemary over there too. Very good. He's so smart. Um, I'm gonna go check the greenhouse and see if I have any scissors out there. So there are all of these volunteered ground cherries all over the garden. And um, I was hoping that some of them might get ripe before the frost, but I think our frost is coming in the next couple of days. Look at my dahlias. Aren't these so beautiful? And they're just, I mean, all of this is gonna be gone when the frost comes. My zinnias, they get a, this fungus and it happens to all of them every year like my garden's infected with it it's actually why i don't save zinnia seeds so things will volunteer here it's with it but i don't it's save the weird. seeds because it's a seed borne deal that they get it's going hot. what happened we won against dad on basketball you won twice. against dad twice and he was going hard too what's up old man you slipping <laughs> They're slipping. Hey Ace. <laughs> hey Ace, what's up, bro? What's up, bro? A ball of energy. He is a ball of energy. Goodness, I'm so excited. Oh goodness. Ezra, are you not cold? Um, yeah, I was gonna cut a bouquet. I thought I might have some scissors in here. Got a bunch of things. Uh, I just cut some flowers. So those your snips like, would work. Snips would work. Maya's gonna go get some scissors, so I'm gonna go back and get the eggs. 
I just was thinking I'd really if if when I once I know the freeze is coming I'm keeping an eye on it and once I know for sure that it's coming I'm gonna come out and just there's gonna be mason jars of zinnias all over my house because they won't last they won't last through the freeze I'll be sad to see them go so as long as I can keep them I'd like to hey hennies oh I don't have a leash for you you can't come out here with me you're still learning we don't need to learn any bad lessons come on you need to go inside I'm gonna take Ace back in the house hey Ace needs to come in he can't go in the chicken yard with me I don't have him on leash one of the most important things whenever you have a puppy that you are teaching to leave chickens alone do not give them opportunities to learn things that you don't want them to know uh, like for instance Ace can come in the yard with us come on bro uh, on a leash where we can teach him leave it and reinforce that because what we don't want him to do is learn the thrill of the chase and the reward of catching a chicken y'all look at the sweet potato plant this started as one measly little start and just took over this bed is that not nuts oh thanks you take an ace in or are you coming with me I'm coming too. Here's another thing that just got really massive. This uh, coleus. It? It's just a pretty plant. Got really big. All of these things did pretty well, but that and that are a standout. And look at the color. It's a sweet potato vine. Isn't that me, beautiful? Me and Auntie just picked it, picked it because we didn't know what it was like. And my rose finally filled out on the arbor. Feel pretty pleased about that. Mom, are you just picking them for decoration? Yes, I'm picking them for the decoration. You should pick the big one. Ben asked if I was picking these flowers for the soup. Nope. We're not eating the flowers today. I'm gonna hold the flowers for you. You wanna hold the flowers for me? All right, good job. How about some of these really pretty ones right here? These are so beautiful. Well, I'm also gonna go get the eggs, so I gotta have room in the basket for that. Goodness, look at that. Zinnia, is that not just a pretty picture? I think we should make a big bouquet. What do you think? Get a bunch of them. Maybe we can make multiple bouquets. Would you like that? Oh, look at that big one. Because it is this, because that's how those things work. Yeah. Like this. You think? <laughs> I got my little bouquet. So I actually plant my zinnias. <laughs> like a little color coordinated. Like I keep in mind the colors that they're gonna be beside. And sometimes like in the spring, whenever they're really getting going, and even in the fall, um, I will pick like color coordinated little bouquets and put them in mason jars. Like here, these are the uh, queen lime zinnias that Baker Creek carries, which is like the red orange heart and then the lime with the red heart pink and red um, and this is just like a collection and they all kind of I guess coordinate they've got like a really muted vintage tone to them and then over here these are dahlias but these like hot pink zinnias and I put those together uh, because I thought that they would kind of complement one another and then back here in this little corner now these t uh, a lot of these volunteer but they are from ones I had originally planted and they're like shades of pink like these remind me of oh, sherbet yes. there's like these really different shades of pink and yellow I want that one. Oh, that one's beautiful look at that Benny and, and over here I've got a couple different shades of yellow but then like that pink just came up on its own there so I don't know it's kind of funny and I actually don't usually pick like a mixed a mixed group like this but so many of them are looking really sickly they've got those kind of mildewy spots on them but I don't know that's a cheery little group here oh here's one more little grouping that I did this year that I really like together cactus uh, redmond red cactus with the queen lime so just kind of the contrast of the red and the lime green together I thought those were pretty next to each other My hand's too small. We'll set down that tool. Here, let me have it. Let's put that up. Carry the flowers for me. Oh, bear. Do you want to come with us? Sit down. Hey, baby. He doesn't care if 
chickens, right? No, he doesn't kill chickens. Um, Gabe doesn't kill chickens too. So when we let him out, he saw a chicken and he did this. Oh, he licked a chicken? Yeah, where he would pretend this is a chicken and, and this is Gabe's tongue. Look. Oh, he just barely licked it. <laughs> okay. Yep, that's what he's done. Hi, honeys. Let's go see him. Woo, hey girls. Well, Fooey. Here I was just bragging about how many eggs they're laying and there's only four. Are you trying to pull that bouquet off on me? Hold on to it. I don't want to hold on to yep, it. Yep, just carry it in with for me. Come on, we're going in right now. I gotta go put these herbs in my purple soup. So I hope that uh, Maya might have come out here to the coop earlier this morning. So the, the juice is purple? The soup, yeah, it had purple carrots in it. It turned it purple. I gotta go in there and finish cooking it. What's These the chickens look happy to see you. They think you have snacks. So one of the things that Ben Turn has been working on, which Ben Turn is now Ben Floy, um, we are really thankful for YouTube being a job for us. Um, it has allowed us to get the help that we needed to continue to do YouTube. So Ben Turn's been here and uh, helping with different projects uh, now as Roots and Refuge Farm has become his job outside of being a full-time student. So he's here part-time and uh, one of the things that he has finished while Jeremiah has been down and kind of hindered in how much work he can do because he can really only use one of his hands. He, ben has finished the well house. Look how awesome that looks. Looks that, so good. Beautiful is craftsmanship. White, is this white wood? It's siding. So that's all finished. We don't have to worry about the well freezing or being in danger of getting vandalized. Um, it's looking nice. You know, um, we get asked a lot, like how do you do it all? Because obviously you see us do a lot and then you know that a lot goes into producing the content that we produce. And we are not at all ashamed to say that we have help. Like Ben Turn coming and helping, that's a massive, massive help. And then like our family and friends will help us be able to go out of town and stuff like that by taking care of our farm. The thing is, is that there was a time that we did the farm and homeschooling and all of that on our own, but we weren't producing content about it. And so there was a, a very difficult season of us producing a lot of content while trying to keep all of those irons in the fire. And we came dangerously close to like burning out. It was like, we can't, we can't do all of this. So having some help with just like the daily stuff has been massive. It's just alleviated a lot of the stress on us. And I'm so glad because being able to produce content, it feels like such a calling. It feels like something that um, it feels important to be able to share this with other people and teach other people. It's such a passion of mine to teach and equip other people to do the things that I love to do. And I love the garden, I love homesteading. And um, I think this is such a worthy life. So equipping other people is something I wanted to be able to con continue to do. And you know, sometimes you get to a point that it's okay. It's okay to need a community. It's okay to need a support system. And, um, I don't think that there should be any stigma in saying, hey, we're doing this incredible thing with the help of a community. And that's definitely the case for us. I'm gonna get inside, put these herbs in this soup and feed these babies dinner. Thank you guys for hanging out with me today. I bless you, until next time.